Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about military tuition assistance. TA, as it's commonly referred to, is a benefit entitled to all members of our armed forces. This program actually makes it possible for you to earn your degree while you serve, sometimes entirely for free. Prior to joining, I didn't know about this program, but honestly, it's one of the best benefits offered to all service members. In today's video, we're going to talk about the rules and limitations of accepting TA. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how I'm using TA to earn my degree while I serve. Okay, guys, we're going to start by saying that every branch is eligible for military tuition assistance. This also includes guard and reserve. I'm active duty Air Force, uh, so all the information I'm going to be giving you is specific to uh, the Air Force. I did do some uh, brief searches for the other branches to make sure, once again, they had TA. And potentially, some of the information I give you could be slightly different. Definitely check with your education office on base to make sure that you have the most accurate information. So, why is military TA fantastic? And that is because you're not using the GI Bill. I've made a couple videos talking about the Montgomery and post 9-11 GI Bill, and there is some confusion in that people think if you use one, you don't get the other, or you, know, you can't use them both at the same time. That's not true. Uh, but you generally, generally, do not want to use your GI Bill while in service. It's a much greater value if you can use it once you're out or give it to a spouse or a child and uh, then you can go to school full-time. Going full-time with the GI Bill will maximize the dollar amount that you get for it. But today we're talking about TA. And tuition assistance covers tuition up to $250 a credit. What does that mean? It means that if the cost per credit for a class exceeds $250, the military will pay the school, the money never goes to you, the military pays the school directly up to $250 a credit. If you were taking a class that cost $300 a credit, you would then have to pay the difference of $50 a credit out of pocket. If the class you were taking was under $250, let's say it was $150, you don't get the difference. The military will just uh, save that difference for itself, um, and you're still using the credit hour, even though it didn't go to the, to the cap of 250. What are the credit caps for this program? It is 124 semester hour credits for an undergraduate degree, and then 42 semester hour credits for a graduate degree. If you uh, are enrolling in a master's program, they chose 42 because some master programs are 30, some are 40, they went with the catch-all of two above, most undergraduate degrees are 120 credits, and once again, it's four above to kind of give you that one class margin of error when earning your degree. This is a fantastic benefit because it's just a lot of money. If you do the math, if you were to you know, use TA to its maximum benefit over many, many years, but there are some people that have done this, it comes out to a total of... Uh, $44,000, which is fantastic. It's just free money. Who doesn't like free money? Why does the uh, military do this? And it's because all professional development costs something anyways. When you go to basic or tech school or any, any kind of uh, leadership uh, or promotion school, it costs the military something to have you do that. So rather than organize it themselves, they're basically just paying private institutions money to develop you professionally. Simple as that. It makes for a more knowledgeable, technical, and device diverse workforce. I also think Military TA does a really good job of retaining enlisted people and extending the commitments of officers. If you try and use TA part-time, you're not going to be able to earn a bachelor's from nothing within your four or six enlistment. So having TA around kind of incentivizes people to do a second enlistment. And then for officers, every time they take TA, uh, it extends their minimum commitment two years beyond from when they accepted TA last. Things to know, 
The uh, degree and courses you take will probably be online. You can take classes at the local education center. You can also try to enroll in a community or local college if it's near your base. The problem is, is that you still have to work your regular job in the military. And a lot of jobs in the military require you working at nights, working weekends, working way more than 40 hours a week. So the only way really to use TA to earn your degree while you're in service is to do it in your free time. Whenever that free time is, an online education really just works the best for doing that. You must, you must develop your degree plan with uh, the school you want to attend, then have it approved by an education officer on base, and then your leadership has to sign off on the request to make it final. And we'll talk about that more in a second. You are limited to $4,500 worth of TA per fiscal year, which equals 18 credit hours. And that, that's nice because you can then take uh, six credits in the fall semester, six credits in the spring semester, and then six credits in the summer semester, totaling 18. At that pace, though, to earn 120 degrees for a bachelor's, it would take you almost seven years. Um, doable, but you know, if you're if you're hoping to get your degree done faster, then you can either pay out of pocket to take more classes, or you can use your GI Bill. TA does not cover fees or books, just tuition. So whatever school you're attending, if there are additional fees uh, not labeled as tuition, then TA is not going to cover that. You'll have to pay that out of pocket. T is not authorized for courses leading to lateral or lower degrees. What that means is, is that if you've already earned a bachelor's you then and then enlist, you can't use the 124 credits allocated for undergraduate TA to earn a second bachelor's. That would be a lateral degree. And obviously, if you already uh, have a master's, then you can't get a lower one. Uh, so you can, only, you can only use TA to advance your educational uh, level and go up. You must take classes that lead to your degree. This is pretty self-explanatory, but if you try and sign up for a class at your school and it has nothing to do with whatever your major is and doesn't fulfill any GE requirements, then the education office is not going to approve that. You can also only change your degree plan once per, per level for the undergraduate and the graduate level. What this means is if you declare you're going to be a mathematics major at such and such a school, then you decide you hate it and you want to switch to English Lit, the military will let you do that only one time. Uh, likewise, if you're uh, attending a school and then you want to switch schools and it's a slightly different program, once again, you're only allowed to do that one time. Things to be careful of is you might have to wait a couple years before your commander approves you for TA. The reason why is because if you're enlisted, they want you to get through basic, your tech school, then um, you know do your CDCs to get established in your job. They want to make sure that you're comfortable and capable doing your job. And if you demonstrate that you're a responsible person, they'll then start approving you for TA. And they might even try and ease you into it saying, hey, this is really stressful and difficult for some, for some folks. So uh, take just one class, and if you do well, next semester go up to two. If you rock that, once again, next semester, maybe you can go up to three. Cannot take classes that would result in full time. You're only allowed 18 credits per year, and you can't just say, oh, I didn't take any credits for the first half of the fiscal year. I'm going to try and use all 18 in one semester. They're not going to let you do that. You cannot take classes in one semester that would result in full-time, full-time meaning 12 or 15 credits. So the most you could take is nine per, per uh, school semester. This is the big one. Everyone needs to understand this, is that you are financially liable for classes resulting in a D or an F for undergraduate and a C, D, and F for graduate work. Likewise, uh, you have 15 credits, semester hours, to establish your GPA, and you must have obtained a 2.0 average for undergraduate 
and a 3.0 average for graduate school in order to keep accepting TA. And this is pretty self-explanatory. If the military is giving you free money and you don't take it serious and you fail a course, then they're going to tell you, hey, give us our money back. Uh, a three credit class could be $750. So if you don't pass your class, you might have to uh, pay back the military $750. So you can withdraw from a class if you have a job-related reason, meaning you got deployed or there was some kind of field exercise or something legitimately re related to, that, to your job that was unforeseen. However, if it is foreseeable, meaning uh, professional, other professional military education was occurring, scheduled medical events, or planned leave, those are not acceptable reasons to withdraw from a course, and you could be financially liable for that class. Where do people go? Uh, the, mo the three schools that I often hear the most are Liberty University, Grand Canyon University, and American Military University. These three schools uh, aggressively promote themselves towards military members and they cap all of their expenses at TA, so your degree is free. When you decide on a program to uh, earn your bachelor's or master's in, I highly recommend you uh, consider these schools, but also consider other schools. And as an example, I'm going to talk about the school I'm currently attending, University of Nebraska Omaha. Omaha is where STRATCOM is located, so a lot of military members uh, go to online or in-person classes here. And I am getting a master's currently in international relations, that's political science. And these, uh, I just googled best online masters in international relations. I think Virginia Tech was number one, University of Springfield, Illinois was two, and then University of Nebraska, Omaha was three. And I personally uh, am earning a degree that I want to, uh, I want to look competitive should I ever leave government service and then try and get a job in the, uh, the, uh, the, out the outside world, basically. These three schools, if you're just trying to check a box, earn your degree, they will meet your qualifications. However, there are lots of great schools, um, established state schools or even some private schools that love having uh, veterans and active duty service members in their classrooms, and they will work with you to meet your uh, financial costs. And a, a great first step that I recommend to everyone is when you find a school that you are just interested in, then call their Office of Military and Veteran Services. Every major school will have uh, an office dedicated to helping veterans and uh, current military service members. And these people know all the tricks, they have all the answers. Phone calls are free. So if there's a school, any school that you're interested in, your first stop should be to call this office on, on that campus and then say, hey, I'm looking to use military tuition assistance. I'm interested in this program. What is available to me? And uh, a lot of schools, University of Nebraska Omaha, will lower tuition fees to exactly the cost of TA. And there's a bunch of other state schools in the Midwest that do this as well. You can, you can Google it. However, I am not earning a bachelor's. Uh, I'm earning a master's currently. And I'll, go, I'll give you the, the numbers of what I'm paying for it. So for my master's at UNO, it's a 10 class program equaling 30 credits. Each class is two grand. So the credit cost for each credit is a little over 650. And I'm only taking one class per term, spring, summer, and fall. I, I work probably 60 hours a week for my job and I couldn't imagine doing more than one class uh, per semester. My total degree cost is 20 grand and the military TA is covering 250 a credit, 250 times 10, 250 times 30? Yes, 250 times 30. So uh, 750 or 7,500. My out-of-pocket expense I'm paying for my master's is 12,500. And to me, I think this is worth it to save my post 9-11 GI Bill in case I ever get out and I wanna use that to um, you know, 
get the housing allowance in order to live while going back to school. Additionally, I'm willing to spend that extra money for a brick and mortar school that has a good reputation. And I know that when I put that degree on a resume going forward, that it will uh, make me stand out from other uh, veterans and uh, degree holders. Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel. I post weekly about military and finance topics. And uh, if there's anything that I missed or you have any comments about military TA or questions, leave me a comment down below and I will read it and get back to you. Until next time, take care.